The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. Hello everybody and welcome to a very special edition of the Rovers Academy podcast. Um, you can see that I am joined by a special guest and we'll get on to him sooner rather than later but um, I just wanted to give you a couple of messages before we do that uh, we do have some fantastic content coming out still over the summer even though Rovers aren't playing obviously we're all eagerly awaiting that fixture list coming out and as soon as that comes we'll have a, a preview podcast about that but and also we'll have one for the academy as well and um, we're hoping to develop our relationship with the academy over the course of the, the next season as well we've already spoken to five members of the academy staff and also Jared Harlock and today we've got the very special uh, in- introduction of a future Rovers star, I think, anyway. So, Dan, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, really good, thank you. Um, you said oh, you're over in Formby there. How's the weather over there? Is it as nice as it is? is up yeah, it's gorgeous outside, to be fair. Sunshine. Getting out on the beach, maybe. maybe um, yeah. Have you been watching much of the Euros? Like, obviously, this we're recording. Yeah, I've caught a few games, to be fair. Yeah. Um, any particular standouts so far in terms of teams or individuals? France are good, aren't they? Yeah. Just, just watching it last night, like, I think France will win it, me. Yeah, I've gone for France as well. I had a little bit of a tickle on them, uh, five to one. But just, I, I was so, like, annoyed that that Mbappe goal got disallowed for offside last oh, night. Oh, no, I've got to win fancy football team. I was like, oh. Yeah, I had exactly the same thing. Like, just as soon as it went in off the post, I was like, that's a nice few points my fantasy. I needed that, no. to be fair. I did have uh, Thomas Mounier in my fantasy, which is my best. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, that was quite yeah. lucky because he didn't even start. Yeah, he came, he came off on, bench. didn't he? Like 27th minute or something like that. So that it was lucky in many ways because you have to play an hour to get the points. Obviously. Yeah, he got the green sheet points as well, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. So I was really fortunate on that one. But I also backed him to be top Dortmund goal scorer at 20 to 1. So I was equally happy with that little yeah. uh, bonus. Um, let's talk about England for a second. I don't know if you, uh, you I presume you watched the match against Croatia. Yeah, um, how, yeah. how do you think we got on there? And, and what do you think our prospects are for the tournament? Um, I, thought, I thought first half it was a bit nervy. And then I think like... Second half came out a bit more. I tell you, I had an absolute world of a game. Calvin Phillips. Yeah. What a player. Yeah. I remember I remember watching him against us when we were in the championship and just said he's going to play for England. I didn't think he'd be that good at, at Euros. Um, yeah. But, but what, a, what a performance he put in. He was just everywhere, wasn't he? Well, I was saying to mates before the game, I was like, not sure about that one. But, and then I was like, you know what? He's going to have an absolute world today because I've said that now and then. Yeah. My other match. Absolutely, you're you're right. So we'll we'll break off from the Euros. Then you've said France are going to win it. England, what do you reckon? Will how far will we get? So yeah, I want to say that we'll go all the way, but me football and mind saying the quarters. Mm, yeah, it, what I'm concerned about is that we will win the group and then we'll get the second place yeah. of that group F. And that's looking likely to be either Portugal or Germany. I'm sure. I think, some fancy I, think chances. Yeah. I think if Portugal comes second in their group, I think we'll beat them. But mm. if if uh, Germany comes second in their group, I'm not sure because yeah. Germany, like they looked quite good last night, they just didn't look like they could score. So if they can get that sorted, I think they could do very well this tournament as well. Yeah, they've got the Achilles heel of, of maybe not a forward who will put the ball yeah. in the net for them. Um, whereas we hopefully have that with Harry Kane. So you're obviously in the summer break now in between seasons. Like, how long do you guys get off? Like, is it um, different for you than it is for the, the senior so team? we're back in on next Monday. So Monday the 21st, we're back in. Um, first team, we're back in a week after. And then, so I think we finished around like the 11th of May. So we've had six weeks off, to be fair. And do you have targets in, in that space? Do you have to kind of keep a certain... Way is the certain fitness expectation, so are you just completely free to do what you want? Um, it's kind of like led by ourselves, but we are we are we are given a like program as such to follow, but yeah. like led by ourselves, so it's not like we need to 
be on a Zoom call and do it whilst they watch or anything like that. It's just like track track the run on Strava, upload it, and just and like, how, stick, it, stick to what they send out. Basically, are you one of the better runners in the in the setup? Would you class yourself as a as a good runner? Uh, running is not my favourite thing in the world. <laughs> that way. No. No, it's not mine either. I can definitely feel your pain there. Um, so when let's talk a bit about your history then. When when did you come to Rovers? How did it all kind of come about for you? Um, so first went into Rovers when I was eight years old. Um, I've been at Liverpool before that, but then I got released from there when I was eight. And then Blackburn rang up my parents and asked if, if I'd come in. So I went in, done well, and then... They offered me my first contract like two weeks later. So, so yeah, quite a quick turnaround. They, yeah. So they must have seen something in you, I would imagine, pretty quickly. How was it getting used to the club coming from Liverpool and going to Rovers? Obviously, you were a young kid, but did you did you feel welcome? Like obviously, a lot of people say that it is a very good kind of family atmosphere. Uh, Rovers. Yeah, I felt welcome straight away. To be fair, I think I think the biggest thing to get used to straight away was the journey there because mm. obviously living in Formby going to Liverpool Academy it was only like 25 minutes away Yeah. but then with Blackburn it's like an hour so just getting used to that but to be fair we've got to give my parents a big thank you because mm. drove me up there four times a week every week for the past 10 years so you have seemed to have quite a strong um, influence from Merseyside, from the, from the Liverpool area. Did that help settle you in as well? Yeah, because I think I'd been I'd been at uh, Liverpool before that, and there was a few of the lads that had also been at Liverpool and that. So I wasn't going into somewhere where I didn't know anyone. So that was quite good. So like I knew people, so I could talk to talk to mm. them as well. Yeah, rather than not knowing anyone. Yeah, absolutely. I think that is. I think that is really important at that level to be able to foster a kind of a camaraderie, a team spirit, if you like, um, socially as well as on, on the pitch. So that's that's good. Um, let's move it forward a little bit. When you were 15, 16, was the scholarship talked about? And, and did you, how did that kind of first deal come about where you were going into the 18s? Yeah, so um, it was in just towards the end of the under 15 season for me. So that will have been when I was in year 10, like school years, got offered yeah. my scholarship early. So I signed a pre-scholarship form. And then, then like year later, started my scholar. So so how did that make you feel just wanted, I guess? Were you, were you feeling like really oh, positive yeah. about it? I was, I was buzzing when I got, got told that they were going to offer me a scholarship. So it was just a great feeling, to be fair. Do you, like you mentioned about being in year 10 there when you got that. How does the schooling work alongside that when you when you're that age? Um, so for me, we had I was still at school, my own high school in Formby. So like I'd be in school all week. We'd have a day, one day a week where we do day release. So like we'd not be in school, we'd go into the academy, do some education there, and then train as if we were like full-time players. And then Three other nights of the week we train in the evening. Yeah, my uh, my wife actually worked at a school down in near St Helens where they had a lot of Liverpool scholars, and it was very yeah. interesting that they would, yeah, you know, like you say, it just gives you that taste of being quite professional about your football, but also kind of keeps you grounded. Hopefully, in that you're still in the school and you you're with your schoolmates as well, so you kind of hopefully get the best of both worlds. I'm not sure if that how that works out in practice, but. Um, when that you started playing for the 18s, then you said you obviously got your, your deal a bit early. But was it your first scholarship year that we, the, we went for the FA Cup run down to the semi finals? I know it finished off for the year, the season after it started, but um, that was my that was in my second year, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. First uh, year, we, uh, we lost to uh, Gillingham in the third round, so that um, wasn't a, a great run. Did you did that spare you on in a way though? that I suppose when you're at that age, that's kind of the big competition down at that level. Um, yeah. Obviously going out to Gillingham the, the previous year and then I, I suppose we were quite close in a way against Preston to, to kind of repeat in um, an earlier exit. But did that spur you guys on to to do uh, well what you did in the end? 
Yeah, so I think like, because we played Newport in the third round mm. in my second year, I think like we obviously knew what had happened the year before. And like, we were all just like very, we were just like, just, we all knew that we couldn't go out again in the third round. So we were all very focused on just making sure we got through that third round and then just see, I mean, the attitude was just like, keep playing well and see how far we can go. And that got us to a quarter final against Arsenal. I just wanted to touch on that particular game. Um, it's one one that we watched, and um, I just thought it was an outstanding performance. What was the feeling like going into that game at Ewood? And then once you got on the pitch, did you just feel it was there for the taking as a team? Because you're up against quite a lot of kind of international youth players on the Arsenal yeah. side. Um, just talk to me a little bit about what it was like preparing for that game and then in the game itself. Well, I think I think at that point we built up a bit of momentum, and especially being at Ewood again, um, I think we just felt as if like we, we felt as if we could beat them going into it, and we thought there's no point going into it thinking ah oh, they're gonna have all the ball, they're gonna dominate the game, to have a r- real good go at them and get in the faces. That certainly worked out. Obviously, for those people who don't know, it was a it was a four-one. You get you let them have a goal at the end. Um, 4-1 victory um, that set up the semi-final against Man City. And we'll just touch on that one as well. Um, obviously, that happened the season afterwards uh, where you were pretty much playing in 23s football. Um, did you, you did still get to play in that game, didn't you? I can't yeah, remember. yeah. So there's two legs against Man City. I guess the mindset must have been quite similar in a way that you knew that they were a very good side and that they were probably going to get most of the ball, but you wanted to get in their faces as well, I imagine. Yeah, I think I think with the whole COVID situation with the game being moved back and then the game being played at St George's Park it didn't mm. help us. Yeah. I think I think if the game had gone on at the end of March when it was I think I think it was meant to be scheduled in the end of March, early April. Mm. I think if the game had gone ahead then with the momentum we had and being at Ewood, I think truthfully I think we would have beat them. It was a good but performance think, regardless, but like you say, we, everyone felt so buzzing and positive after that Arsenal result and performance. Yeah. That, that Yeah, like you say, we were all just looking a, forward to it as fans as well. Yeah, just a shame that the season got uh, cancelled. Yeah, absolutely. And you've had like, more experiences against Man City since. So let's talk about being in PL2 and in the 23s. And it's been such a successful season for you guys um, pushing Manchester City all the way. We were top of the table at various points. Was that a really good experience as well? And and how much do, I, do you actually care about positioning the PL2 table? I think, I think we had a very good season last season. I think probably looking back and reflecting on it, it was probably a disappointing end, end of it, the last six games probably. Yeah, I think, I think we probably all look back and be a bit disappointed how it finished, but I think overall a great season for us all. But I think, I think with be where we are in the table, I think like obviously being around the top was a, like real good, like just made everyone feel good and people were like buzzing, like they were training it was like top class, mm. like the whole attitude from everyone was like really high and that's so. all. And you looked at that table at various points during the season and even at the end, you know, Blackburn Rovers are there at the top or second, surrounded by Man City, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man United, you know, all of, you know, the teams that we're all familiar with being at the top of the, the Premier League table and seniors. It must be quite a buzz, like you say, quite a, a positive mindset to look at that table and go, Blackburn Rovers are one of the top on the 23 sides in the country. Yeah, definitely. Because I think I think it I think ultimately it reflected how well we'd played as a team and how how hard we'd worked like all season. And it's not as if we we've kind of cheated in a way by playing the more experienced and you know the 22 year olds, 21 year olds. It's a lot of you guys who were who were in that FA Cup youth run made quite a good a, a, an en masse transition into the under yeah, 23s as well. So we're still talking about a very young under 23 side as well. Yeah, definitely. Do you think that that kind of com- that run 
was able to propel yourself and Isaac and Jared and and Salil and, and all of the others that kind of made that transition and Sam of course um did that help as well that you kind of getting familiar with each other as you go through the age groups and then being able to replicate the kind of relationships that you have in the under 23s as well yeah definitely I think I think with the way we ended the season last year especially with the youth cup I think just built like a built obviously it built momentum and then but I think as a group probably brought us closer and like we were starting to enjoy it more playing with each other yeah absolutely so let's shift the focus slightly onto yourself just to kind of give us the last five ten minutes of the, of the chat how would for those people who haven't watched you in the 23s or missed the FA Cup youth run tell us a little bit about yourself and the way you play or how you describe the style that you that you play yeah so I am um, I play right back and um, I like to defend especially in 1v1 situations but I also like to get forward and put in crosses and try and get assists to the team so yeah and you definitely still see right uh, d- the defense as the kind of the solidity the the primary feature of a right back you've got to be able to be strong defensively yeah i think well i think with the how the games evolving full backs need to be able to do both sides of the game i think like obviously you've got Trent alexander arnold like the amount of crosses he puts in these days and like the amount of assists he picks up it's like staggering really looking at the stats so I think that's definitely where the modern fullbacks go and need to be able to affect the game going forward as well as defensively I think the way that that Tony Mowbray has been setting up the senior team as well you can see that the width's been provided by Ryan Nyambi or Joe Rankin Costello when they've played that position so I'm guessing that you think you're trying to kind of see what's going to be required of the first team right back and replicate that kind of thing in, in your play as well is that would that be accurate to say yeah I think I think I've just got to try and try and do what Tony Murray's looking for yeah. and just do it to the best I can and try and impress him and have you been able to get involved in any first team training have you have you played alongside those players in yeah I've been training with them a few times to be fair it's a, it's a great experience to be fair it's just just like watching the things that they do slightly different to me and then hopefully I can like take that into my game to improve my to improve my game. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you hope to achieve with that then? Are you one of those people who has like goals for the season or for the next few months and tries to tick things off, or are you just one of those that's you know you want to see how it goes basically? I think I, I set goals, but I think I just take it like day by day, week by week, just each week, just try and do the best I can every day. Yeah, absolutely. Do you are you hoping to get involved in the first team, like get some minutes in the first team this season coming up? Um, I think I think the aim for me is just to go back in and pre-season, do as well as I can, and see what happens. Yeah, exactly. You can't. Con- it's I suppose it's outside of the sphere of your control, isn't it? And you can't kind of get fixated on something that you can't control. So that seems to be sensible to me. Um, I just wanted to touch on the mental side of the game. I, I'm a big advocate in that you've got to be like the the top top players have a, a special mindset that they're able to kind of just the, the very best performers. It's what separates the the good players from the very good players is the mental side of the game. Do you do any work around that? Is do you think you're strong mentally to be able to take that through into the professional game? I think. I think, like, just in football in general, people are going to have ups and downs. And I think it's just how you come back from the downs that'll, like, see how far you can go. So there's going to be times where you won't play, but it's, like, how your attitude is. So you've got to go back in the next day, train as hard as you can, and then keep going. I think, for me, like, I think I just get me... If things aren't going my way, I just get me head down, work hard, and try and put it right yeah absolutely and that goes for like say on the pitch in training and at all times I guess um, just one final question then we've had uh, one from one of the Rovers chat writers who just wanted to know what you felt the coaching setup was like in the academy and, and whether you think that, that the that side of things at Blackburn Rovers is 
you know, is as good as you're going to find elsewhere in the country. Yeah, definitely. Like, the coaching setup at the academy is superb, to be fair. Like, I think, I think probably the three biggest coaching staff for me over the past couple of years probably been Mike Sharon, Ryan Kidd and Billy Bart. I think since the start of my scholarship, I think my game's come on massively. And, like, that's mainly down to them three. I think just, like, speaking to me about different things in my game, helping me in training, doing a bit after training, working on certain things that I need to improve. Yeah, absolutely. That's good to know. Um, thank you so much for your time this morning. I, I really appreciate you coming on and yes, chatting to us for 20 minutes. Um, hopefully we'll get to see you, like I say, involved in the first team next season. If not, then I know you'll be doing your best in the on the 23s and in the PL2 as well. So thank you again, and uh, hopefully people have enjoyed that, and we'll speak to you again soon. Thank you very much. The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below.